Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss some interview question on SOC analyst. I already done four session on SOC. So you can check my playlist of SOC, you can get those the videos and uh, I'm planning to make more videos in future on a SOC analyst. If you're new to my YouTube channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Okay, so first interview question. What is the host hardening measure that can reduce the possibility of malware incidents? Uh, Sometimes people take this as a, a very you know difficult question because there are different kind of a practice we have by which we can able to protect the system from malwares. So when interviewer asks this question, his expectation or her expectation is basically to see if the candidate having a high level visibility about the best practice of host hardening. So with that aspect, they basically ask this question. So how to tackle such question? Question, they ask about malware incident. Okay, not about typical hacking and all that. They're just saying how to secure the host for malware incident. So we have some best practices that you can follow, like you can disable or uninstall the unnecessary services, which are additional infecting vector for malware. So example, like some ports, which can be a invite for entering a malware. Okay, some services when you're basically running, like some plugins are there. Okay, when you install those plugins, it can be an attack vector for the malware. Okay, some ports which is not been monitored can be used as a penetration for the malwares. Sometimes change the default username password. Sometimes what happens is hacker discover the system with default username password like admin admin. So make sure whenever you deal with the host hardening, always reset the passwords. That's the most important thing. Even your modems, the modems that we're using at home, we always use the default vendor username password admin admin so make sure you should reset the password whenever you basically run any kind of a system startups and all that you know it has some automatic scripts so from the temporary folders and from the startup services you can check like like any kind of a script is basically there or not so disable the automatic execution of binary and script especially in the case of pen drives and all that and apart from that monitor the behavior of common applications such as email client web browser instant messaging and software Along with that, you can also tell them, okay, on a regular basis, we conduct the security awareness training for the people. So by this, we can able to modify their behavior because 100% uh, security is a myth and the weakest link of an organization is a people. And we can basically secure this kind of a things by providing a more frequent training. We give them awareness about uh, which is basically bad click and which is basically right click. So by awareness training, we can improve their behavior. And that is the only way you can able to secure the organization because installing a hi-fi firewalls, DRM solutions, okay, will, will be become ineffective if person intentionally or unintentionally click on some link which can bring the system in trouble. So this kind of a statement when you add in your in, you know in your interview session, it brings more confidence among the interviewer. Yes, he is very mature toward these activities. Okay. So these kind of a things that you can defy. Let's move to the next interview question. It's a very frequent question which is asked in the interview. Okay, the question is what is true positive, what is false positive, what is false negative and what is true negative because as a SOC analyst on the level one and level two, you're dealing with this issues. So interviewer want to know when they need to have a clarity about what is the level of knowledge you, you have. Okay, so that can be a good chance, that can be a good opportunity for you to penetrate into the job. So first part here we called as a true positive. True mean positive, true plus positive. What is the meaning of that? It means there is a legitimate attack which trigger to produce an alarm. Okay, so it is clearly said that correctly identify. Example, we have an antivirus. Okay, so there is a virus which basically penetrated into the system. So antivirus is able to detect that virus successfully. Okay, based on a signature. It means it is working in a proper condition. It means it shows that okay, the tool is working in a proper condition whatever the virus was there it was discovered by the antivirus so that is called proper working of the tool that also shows proper working of the tool so legitimate attack which triggered to produce an alarm okay second is called as a false positive false positive basically mean incorrectly identified which is called as a false alarm so you investigate another another of this brute force alert and you and find out it was some user who mistyped their password a bunch of time Okay, but you consider it as an attack, but it is not. It's not a real attack. Okay, here, you know, as a SOC analyst, okay, or as a candidate, you know, 
you can add one point like you know most of the time we always struggle with false positive because false positive alert waste a lot of time and resource of the people because monitoring staff spent time investigating the norm uh, on the non malicious event so this kind of a statement when you use it gives some kind of a positive impression among the interviewer and he get the visibility yes the person has worked in the soc okay so po false positive mean this is not a virus but tool identifies a virus okay which is called as a false alarm then for the soc analyst the biggest concern is to deal with the false negative it mean incorrectly rejected which is a most dangerous dangerous condition which say that okay when no alarm is raised when attack has been taken place it mean antivirus was there was failed to detect the virus which is actually a virus was failed to detect this is one of the reason for a good defense in depth strategy is required if one control is failed we have another control to block example like we have a firewall one which is installed with packet filtering then we have another firewall which is installed with the stateful filtering so if one firewall unable to inspect unable to detect we have another firewall same like with the system if user fail to identify virus there is a antivirus is there which uh, able to identify that because the biggest concern for any soc analyst is to handle the false negative okay if signature was designed to detect a certain type of malware but and no alert is generated when the malware is launched on a system this would be the false negative okay so you have to be very careful about these things and it is clearly said now when no alarm is raised when attack has been taking place and last is basically called as a true negative if signature was designed to detect a certain type of malware and no alert is generated without that malware being launched then it is a true negative which is also desirable this is when ids identify an activity as acceptable behavior and the activity is actually acceptable so that is basically called as a true negative okay which is correctly rejected no incident no alert so true positive is a good culture of the tool false positive is basically fail to detect like you know falsely detect the virus false negative is basically mean fail to detect the virus which is a more concern for us and true negative is basically mean no incident no identification so as a soc analyst you must be familiar with these terms let's move to the next interview question okay what is phishing attack phishing attack is a practice of sending a fraudulent communication that appear to come from a reputable source example i receive a email uh, from the uh, from peter at microsoft.com so i was in the impression the mail is actually came from a peter.microsoft.com and it is mentioned in the signature this mail is from the hr congratulation you have been selected for this job for more information please share your necessary details so we trust that email and based on that we share all the information so this is called as a phishing attack but same thing is basically done over the voice it means someone has basically did the call and dictated me hey i'm calling from microsoft it means it's a voice call then it has become a wishing 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 attack okay wishing sorry okay but when we receive anything on a email okay from a known sender which for me it's a known sender but someone has spoofed his email address and send an email to me so it basically build a trust and i'm sure i'm going to click on the link same like you know me as a user has sent you an email so you will you expecting that okay prab has sent me an email wow let me check so prab name when you see it build a trust and based on the trust you might click on the action okay so 90% of the companies are vulnerable for the phishing attacks and we can improve we can reduce this attack by some best practices like never reply to email address which asking for financial or personal information no matter even it's a mail coming from your husband or wife or friend or brother sister or son or daughter call him and confirm do not provide passwords pin or other access code in response to email no one ask do not open the suspicious email file containing attachment and most important do not respond to any suspicious or unwanted email so this is some of the important practice we have along with that you can basically provide the regular security awareness training to the people of an organization by which you can able to improve the behavior let's move to the next interview question what can be the possible outcome of a lesson learn activity for malware incident now just imagine you are a soc analyst according to incident response process you respond to the malware and you counter the attack now the incident has been closed now you want to improve this process you want to ensure this malware should not re, uh, you know reflected back in the organization it should not infected back the system so what can can kind of a post mortem analysis you will do like change in the policies 
by policy we can basically introduce and change the behavior of an organization okay example like you introduce a policy no one supposed to browse social media no one supposed to browse such kind of websites we give them disclaimer about if we, if we find anyone browsing social media or this kind of website during office time we will take an action so this is something by which we can able to control the behavior of the people then improve the security awareness session okay i explain them about which is authorized and which is not then improve and install more effective more advanced malware detection tools by which we can able to detect the new malwares along with that increase the frequency with which software and signatures are updated increase the scope of monitoring last time we limited to three system now we are monitoring seven systems because more and more monitoring you do definitely it impact the performance also but we get a better visibility reassess the system for the validation limit execution of unapproved programs whatever we have and most important whatever the nature of attack you identify whatever the vector of attack you identify according to that update the firewall rules like this set of ip should be blocked this kind of a signature should be defined so by this you can able to improve your organization security from this malware incidents and all that and lesson learn is a post mortem activity we do for every incident so if you find this video useful do share in your network do share your suggestions comments in the comment box do let me know what are the next video should i made i'm happy to receive those feedback bye bye take care